Welcome all the participants to the webinar on disinfection and safe dental practice during the age of COVID-19. Why this webinar? Many people, many webinars during the lockdown, but this webinar is going to be unique. Two ways it's going to be unique. First, this is going to be a webinar which is not just going to discuss with you the concepts of disinfection or safe dental practice. We have been learning about disinfection for the safe dental practice ever since the first year of BDS. Well, what makes this webinar then unique? This webinar is focused at this time when we are opening up our dental practices. And we all know that COVID-19 is here to stay with us. At least the WHO tells us that we will have to make necessary changes in our lifestyle to live and co-thrive in maybe superiorly thrive when compared to COVID-19. So why this webinar again when we are coexisting with COVID-19? When we accept the fact that we may need to open up our dental practices along with the threat of COVID-19 and amidst the threat of spread of infection, we have to understand there are a few concepts that we need to change. There are a few protocols that we need to adopt. There are a few basics that we need to learn unlearn few things and relearn in a different way so that we can practice safely. Safety, two folds, one for the dentist, another for the patients who are going to visit us. It's very essential. As we all know, dentistry, ophthalmology and ENT, they belong to the high risk practice zones of medical practice. However, even with this threat, we will have to open up our dental practices and we will have to get back to our work in safe and secure environment. We all know that the load of virus in the saliva is the maximum. In spite of that, most of our procedures are going to generate aerosols. And study has already proven that these aerosols, once generated in our dental practice, that can uh, go up to around 10 to 15 feet from the dental chair and reside in the atmosphere as well as on the uh, environmental surfaces which is in and around our clinical setup. So when it is inevitable for us to function without generation of aerosols, we need to follow one particular practice to protect ourselves. We need to of course have PPE, personal protection equipment, but is that sufficient enough? The answer is clearly no. Why? Because many people, many surgeons, in spite of wearing the personal protection equipment, the protection has not been optimal. They have still contracted the viral particles and got infected. Why? This is because of the presence of viral particles in the environment, on the surfaces in and around the operatory, and also in the atmosphere. So we need to learn how to kill these viruses in the clinical atmosphere and all the environmental surfaces that is present in, in and around the clinical uh, scenario and setup. So. That is why that brings us to a sole weapon of disinfection and disinfectants. If we effectively disinfect <laughs> in spite of the aerosols, we will be able to control the presence of viral particles in the clinical environment. So PPE is a must, yes, accepted. But more than that, we have to kill the viruses in the atmosphere. We have to kill the viruses in the environmental surfaces which are residing on the environmental surfaces. And we have to make sure even after we have removed the PPE, long after the clinical procedure, we and our patients remain safe. So that is why this brings us to this platform. And this platform is unique, I told. Why? Because most of the dentists here are from Mysore and we have an academic as well as an industry collaboration in this webinar. Why academic and why industry? Academic because we need to relearn the concepts of disinfection so that it can be adopted well and industry because we need to know not just the knowledge and know-how of how to use the disinfectants we should know what are the disinfectants available for us in the clinical scenario what are the disinfectants available in Mysore market for us which we can the next day order learn about how to use them and in fact actually practically use them so that there is effective dental practice so here we have with us 
an academician and a well known known clinician dr jai shankar hp who is an associate professor of department of oral medicine and radiology in jss dental college and hospital jss academy of higher education and research and along with him we have mr das prasad from biofields who is the senior territory manager in the company which is a division of tulip diagnostic private limited so dr jai shankar is going to give basics of disinfection make you learn and relearn the concepts well and then mr das prasad is going to tell you what are the products that are available for you to actually take care of all these things we will be discussing in these following segments we will be discussing about how to combat covid by use of hand disinfectant effectively which is very important in today's context antiseptic and skin preparation from the patient point of view it is very important environmental and surface disinfection yes because after every procedure the viral particles are seen in the environment in the environmental surfaces as well as in the atmosphere so we need to kill them so environmental and surface disinfection is a new uh, is where what i should say is uh, an angle given to uh, clinical dental practice now so it's very going to be very very important from now onwards instrument disinfections cleaning protocol so how effectively are we going to use these particular reagents which are going to be explained the way it should be used as well as fogging and fumigation which is yet another dimension to clinical dental practice today which we used to not take it seriously or not follow it it used to be only followed in the operation theaters but now it has become mandatory for the smaller clinical setup as well with that i will stop sharing and i request dr jai shankar to start his screen and presentation as well oh good afternoon everyone as usual oh the technical genius dr prashant when he takes care everything will be smooth and fine i thank him and dr raghunath and then the, our pilot principal dr ravindra s and then this would have been not possible without the idea cooperation so without wasting time we will start up our class and then uh, with me uh, one of the uh, well known well known by uh, tulip diagnostic limited that is a company and he is the senior territory manager vast in the knowledge of fields of chemical and molecular level chemical and molecular level and he will going to highlight us to the taking it to the molecular level so and the first of all thing is here to tell you that oh, we are not propagating any oh, single company we are mainly concerned about the the usage on the selection of the the molecular level of the your disinfectant so why we are putting the bioshield as this one is because this is the one the company which has given me the the entire product or the entire chemical composition which is required which is present in this scenario so that's why we are given the uh, as a uh, use the uh, some of the company's name will be given here so now we'll start with this thing with the uh, the lockdown of uh, three phase and then we are in the verge of uh, starting our dental practice some of them are rejuvenated some of them are depressed and some of them are enlightened and more knowledgeable when they are opening the clinic so now in this contest we'll give you view the, the latest updates of the the disinfectants which are available in the market and and usage of this disinfectant in proper usage so the take home message is describing the futures of standard precaution as the framework for infection control and then we are going to explain you various disadvantage and advantage of the disinfectants are available and also disinfection procedure and uh, to add it to that uh, cdc guidelines and protocol for disinfection to start with uh, this disinfectant is not a new concept as such it is used in days years together where in the in the early civilization they practice salting and then smoking and pickling and drying these are all the one of the process of disinfecting the material and the, the alexander the great the one of the greatest invention of the history 
he is so uh, the right hand of this invention is the aristotle he is the one who gave the idea to him to boil the water so that his soldiers will not be suffered from any type of water borne infection so that's why they can travel down from the alexandria to the to the indian is because of this aristotle that is the simple procedure of boiling the water and then we are seen in the our uh, historical age in also that is the use of wine vinegar honey as a dressing agents for wounds not only that the mummification which is the absurd of the civilians now uh, which is also one of the ways of preserving the natural one the credit of for this infection goes to two names that is isnak philips and simmevillins he is a bulgarian one there are the difference in pronunciation and another one is the father of the disinfection is joseph lister so this is the picture of the joseph lister and then we will going to take you a brief of about 5 minutes the some of the technical terms which we use because some of them are academician who are more mature more knowledgeable and then but they don't require this one but some of them are a fresh graduates are some of them are slightly older practitioner so some terms may be confusing so that to make them very clear we just brush up some few things what do you mean by sterilization and what is the difference between the sterilization and the disinfection sterilization is the procedure of killing or removing all forms of microbial life it is just like a killing killing including the spores microendospores so that means totally there is no living things existing on any object or the object which we are subjected for sterilization whereas the disinfection is reducing the number of contaminating microorganism we are use the word contaminating is because this is the microorganism which are hazards to us which are liable to cause some amount of infection either it may be in the to the instrument or from the instrument to the patient or within the patient itself why we need to have the disinfection is to prevent the disease occurrence and prevent the contamination in the hospital because from one patient to another and even in the microbial laboratories and and the another one is involves the removal of all type of vegetative and the spore forming pathogens here the disinfectant and antiseptic they may ask you can i use the disinfectant in the hand no there are two different thing one if you are using an inert objects or a non living objects then it is called as disinfectant if you are using or uh, to inhibit the growth of a microorganism on the external surface of the body it is called as antiseptic so determing and sanitation once again it is the same that one is determing is the mechanical removal of the most microorganism in a limited area whereas sanitization we use that in case of food handling equipment to meet the public standard so that's why in the tv and all these things we are heard about the sanitation sanitizer and the two things which are confusing is sepsis and asepsis sepsis indicates the bacterial contamination that is derived from the big word asepsis means absence of significant contamination there should not be any contamination either ourselves or instrument or the chair or the surrounding area so some of these aseptic techniques which are already written in the textbook and then they, you are aware of it i don't have to go into the detail of these aseptic techniques because of the time limit and then here we use the two terms if i want to kill the organism it is called as sidem just destroy it it is completely destroying the organism whereas if i go going to limit the growth the potential growth of the organism is inhibited or retarded or reduced then it is called as statics so here we call it as bactericidal if we are killing the bacteria if it is a virucidal which inactivates the which the virus and if it is a fungicide if it is a fungus and the most one is sporicidal where in i am going to kill the even the bacterial spores what is the rationale the rationale of the infection control dental patient dental healthcare workers may be exposed to it varieties of microorganism why because we are the closest associated with saliva we are the closest associated with blood we are the closest associated with the nasopharyngeal secretion we are the closest associated with all type of secretion which you find tears 
nasal oral so we are the one who are most probably come in contact with the millions of different types of microorganism so the way we get the infection is by direct contact from patient or blood or from the sera or body fluid indirect contact or touching the contaminated surfaces like chair or hand pieces or player or droplet infection from the per patient the droplet from the nasal secretion or from the pharyngeal secretion and next one is parental transmission that is used because of needle stick injuries if there is a cuts abrasion or if you are using a bar indirectly if you get the needle stick injury or bar injury or if you are using a file and then that injury that is what we call as parental the different modes of transmission from parent to dental team from patient to dental team and dental team to patient from our team to spreading to the patient and from patient to patient from one patient to another from dental office to community these are all the scenario which is very very crucial in this case of covid 19 wherein the any possibility we will get infected either from the dental office to community or community to dental office to the patient and from patient to dental team from dental team to the patient that is why this webinar is kept on these issues and to address on these issues there are some few patients who are susceptible for this individual they are called as the susceptible individual who are all the susceptible individual the patient on radiation therapy chemotherapy immunocompromised patients and immunosuppressive agents old age patients and geriatric patients are the patient with uncontrolled diabetic all these things are susceptible or risk patients so i uh, put on the, the chart in the your monitor so to see that we are exposed as a dentistry as a dentist as are as a healthcare providers which are all the organism we are more commonly susceptible so we they call it as covid warriors no so for a dentist they are called as aseptic warriors because they will be facing with million types of this is a list of the the bacteria which are there mycobacterium Treptonema pallidum, Neisseria, Pseudomonas, Stepto, Staphylo, Helicobacteria, Carnobacteria, Diphtheria, and then millions of uh, um, viruses. The one which are highlighted is coronavirus, and I don't want to take into depth of this. What are this? So from past three months, I think so. Your full, your head, and even including your nails is filled with the coronavirus. that is the amount of uh, webinars that is the amount of uh, the knowledge which they from the media is pumped into your brain so rubella virus rubella rubella virus and then mumps influenza virus which is a sister concern of coronavirus herpes zoster virus papilloma virus coxsackie virus and then i given you the what are the base of transmission and route of transmission and the infection which it causes if you got a, uh, a opportunity you can just click it and then save it in the screen saver as so that you can able to review when and whenever when you get the free time and these are all the infection which we used to uh, worry about uh, when when i during our practice of about 25 years back the one deadly disease is uh, aids now it is a uh, completely nobody will go worry about the aids and hepatitis hepatitis to name with all the alphabet letter from a b c d e and then we have got another one is hiv virus as a dentist which are very common and hsv virus herpes simplex type 1 and type 2 and another one is epstein barr virus eb virus and to take into the consideration even we are not spared from the fungal infections so candida albicans pneumonocytis carcinii these are all the one and then so to give you the brief out outlook what are the ways the, the chemicals germicide chemicals which are used i given you this chart very simple chart wherein the bacterial spore stands the higher and the lowest one if you see here is the lipid or medium size virus which includes your covid 19 your friendly coronavirus novel coronavirus so to kill the novel coronavirus i don't have to go for the highest sterilization so lower level sterilization st means uh, that is the sterilization procedure high end hld means high level disinfection 
and ILD means intermittent level and another one is low level disinfection. So you can see the chart, the least one is your novel coronavirus. And then the sterilization, this is the golden standard. No disinfectant, no chemical in this world. Even the Mr. Das pressures agree with me that cannot substitute the sterilization. So it is not true. My topic to discuss about the different types of sterilization procedure, different types of auto autoclave which are there, which includes B, C, and E, and N class. So that is not. So the way we use the temperature and in the moist environment, even we can able to achieve the 100% of killing of the microorganism and the spores. And then there are other ways that is the radiation, UV radiation, which is now coming up very fast. And then there are so many works are going on up the, about the sterilization procedure using the UV light. And then by the filtration, we have got membrane filters, HEPA filters, ULPA filters, and then chemicals. Our main concern as the, the next to me, Mr. Das Prakas is there, he is the chemical engineer. He is the man who knows each and every chemical which is there in the disinfectant. He is going to highlight you about the, the disinfectant. So the chemical disinfectants which we use, so he is going to explain to us, that is the alcohol in that one, IPA, isopropyl alcohol, ethanol, halogens, aldehydes, peroxides, paraacetic acid, phenol, quaternary ammonium compound, heavy metal and bicarbonates. So the, any chemicals which is there, disinfectant throughout the world, which falls in this category. So there is no other chemicals apart from this. Just what you say, sir? Definitely, sir. So, so as you know that, so the disinfection equipped three levels of disinfection. That is mm -hmm. high level, high level disinfection, which kills all the microorganisms except bacterial spores. That is up to mycobacterium tuberculosis. It will take care. Example is most alkylating agents and intermediate level disinfection that is which kills up to mycobacteria, most viruses and bacteria. Examples are phenols and halogens and chlorine releasing compounds. Next is low level disinfection products kill some viruses and bacteria, which is very uh, easy to destroy. Like example, as you said the earlier, coronavirus that is hydrogen peroxide, heavy metals and alcohols. And then we are given the list, the whatever we are told, we are given in a condensed form, where are our whatever the high level, intermediate and low level and the sterilization, what any pro 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 product which you are choosing should have this capacity. Vegetative form, that is a bacteria, tuberculosis bacillus, spores, and even the fungus. Fungus, we can achieve with high and low intermediate and the virus, you can see the virus, all the lipid and medium size, Low level lipid, low level lipid, and smaller size viruses will be killed with either with sterilization, high level of disinfection, the low level. even the lowest level. Sir, we will agree that even the lowest level will be killed by all type of virus will be killed. So you don't have to worry. That means I had to use the sterilization of a higher degree of a B class articulate to, to kill the coronavirus. Even with the low level, we can able to kill the coronavirus. So, to, uh, just to brief you up about the hand hygiene, you know that hand hygiene you know, and the ways you have to pray, you have to wash your hand, hand washing, and then we have got antiseptic hand washing, alcohol by based hand, hand rub, all these things are available in the market. We will go into highlight on you. And then why it is important because of the CDC guidelines on hand hygiene, they say that before touching the patient and before donning the gloves and before the procedure, you have to do the hand hygiene and after contact with the patients and after contact with body fluids or excretion or skin wounds or removing of the gloves, we have to do. This is the CDC procedure and CDC guidelines we had to follow and then I think so I don't have to highlight on this hand hygiene and all these things because if you switch on in each and every advertisement, you can see the how to uh, wash your hand, how to rub your hand, all these things. So I don't have to take much time. So now we go directly into the, the domain of hand rubs. So we have used some product name here. That is because of the too easy for you to remember and all these things. And then we go into the molecular level. Now this chapter will be taken by the uh, by the Das Prasad. Good evening, everybody. The first and the foremost hand rub is Alconox. That is, it contains isopropyl alcohol 50% and 25% 1 propanol. 
it's both are isomers when combined together it gives an excellent synergistic effect that's why you put it as one propanol and two propanol it is basically bactericidal fungicidal and viricidal it also contains sufficient amount of moisturizers because you repeatedly wash your hands with alcohol which tends to remove your skin texture so we have added sufficient amount of moisturizers in it so that even after repeated use of this product it doesn't damage your skin so the contact time should be 30 seconds that is everybody knows that the standard guidelines how to wash your hands with uh, hand rubs so it's a rapid action and quick drying you can use this before you done sir sorry to intervene uh, in between could you please be louder definitely sir definitely definitely so next is purulium gel so it contains 62% ethyl alcohol with a 3.3% of isopropyl alcohol we added for denaturing it it is also bactericidal, fungicidal and viricidal, 30 seconds. The only difference between the liquids and gel is, gel saves the amount of liquid when you are using. Because many people apply different types of pressure on the dispenser of a bottle. So the chances of spillages will be more. So we have made it in the gel form. So there won't be minimize the wastage of the solution or hand rubs. So next is Ecomax. It contains 70% ethyl alcohol or ethanol with 2.5% chlorhexidine in gluconate. Why chlorhexidine gluconate when only ethyl alcohol is sufficient to kill the organisms? Because as you know that chlorhexidine gluconate is the molecule which has a wide range of bactericidal, fungicidal and viricidal effect and it's a broad spectrum microbicidal agent and it gives an excellent synergistic, sorry, excellent residual activity. So it gives the residual activity or persistent activity up to three hours when you go for the procedure because many of your procedures last long for 45 minutes to one hour you are operating in the oral region. So this will enhance the things of efficacy of a hand rub. And chlorhexidine gluconate, in even in presence of blood and pus, the action doesn't diminish itself. That is the beauty of chlorhexidine gluconate. So the contact time remains same, 30 seconds. And the mode of rubbing, everything remains same. Now. Sir, what the, sir, the make take home summary is, if you want to use a profile, isopropyl, IPA, 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 isopropyl and N profile, so we will get a bad, good immediate bactericidal no. viricidal effect. The only difference between isopropyl alcohol and ethyl alcohol is sir, ethyl alcohol takes some additional time to evaporate. Isopropyl alcohol, it's a fast drying liquid when compared to ethyl alcohol. That is the added advantage with isopropyl alcohol. Efficacy wise, both are similar. Both ethyl alcohol and isopropyl and n profyl functions the same. Only thing is, ethyl alcohol takes more time to and the percentage is also. And then, if you want your skin wherein the residual action should be more, in that cases, you should select which contains chlorhexidine. Yeah, I mean, sir? No, sir. They can all, even in presence of, uh, absence of chlorhexidine gluconate also, we have added sufficient amount of moisturizers to all the brands of hand rubs. Hand rubs. Okay. Yeah. That is the must and should because uh, when you repeatedly use a lot of hand rubs on your hands, so the may it become your big, hands will become very harsh if you are directly using only alcohols. So sufficient amount of uh, skin protective agents are added in that, which okay. is called moisturizers. So and another advantage of chlorhexidine, you know, as a dentist, most of you are aware of it. The another thing is, is it is a one of the best antiseptic agent for the skin, and it has residual activity stays for about more than three hours. Three hours. Okay, so then we have got a one of the novel this thing is one Sterimax. brand of Sterimax. Why I will call it as triple action hand rub base? See, you can compare this uh, com chemical composition here. It contains isopropyl alcohol up to seventy five percent. It contains two point five percent of chlorhexidine gluconate and triclosan. The beauty of triclosan is it is a proven agent against MRSA, that is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. See if the outbreak is there, nobody knows, but it is very difficult to eradicate the MRSA once it is happened in any institute or clinics. So that is safe to use triclosan. So it chain breaks the chain of the cross contamination from patients to the doctor or from patients to the patients. And all the other things are very similar. That is, it contains alcohol. It contains three, two antiseptics and one alcohol. So none of the Indian company has got this unique combination of two antiseptics and one alcohol. This is the unique combination and it's a fantastic product. It has got a uh, very good colon fragrance. Activity is bactericidal, fungicidal and viricidal. Contact time is 30 seconds. 
So what the sir is saying is, so as you know, triclosan is very familiar to the dentist because it is contains in toothpaste, even it contains in deodorants, it contains in even soaps. You are aware of it. And the addition of chlorhexidine, residual activity, and then alcohol for the faster relief. So it is a novel product. Which if the, any product which contains chlorhexidine, triclosan, and alcohol is the best as far as the, the suggestion. So we will have an immediate action. We will have a residual action and then sustained action with this. So the, now this so from the hand rub, we go into the and hand wash. scrub and hand wash, wash, and wash. Hand wash and hand scrub solutions. See, sir, doctor, uh, you will be uh, you will be frequently washing your hands with water. So, what are the chemical agents you are washing? Uh, you are washing with your hands means you come across with cordinardine, which is a very good which is a very good molecule from past seventy to eighty years. We are using this cordinardine solution. Now, the Western world has shifted from cordinardine solution because the Pseudomonas acacia the species has been started growing in the manufacturing time itself in powdering iodine ranges. So they have stopped using powdering iodine in Western countries. They have shifted to alternatives like chlorhexidine gluconate scrub solutions. That is, we have in bio scrub. So because the persistent activity is excellent when compared to powdering iodine. Powdering iodine gives you only up to 45 minutes persistent activity. That is residual activity. Whereas chlorhexidine gluconate, it gives up to three hours. And it ranges to six hours sometimes. So, in case if you are using any impaction procedure or if you are using any implant or in case of a OT and in cases of a surgical intervention of the, any of these things, in that cases for a residual motor action, they say that you go for a chlorhexidine based hand rubs is much sorry, better. hand washes, hand scrub solution is very much, very much better, sir. And okay. it is advocated. And for regular wash, you can go with heat max that is 0.5 percent triclosan. Where triclosan is uh, more efficacy, up to it kills up to Mycobacterium tuberculi. Your hands are most protected. So frequently hand washing, you can start with heat max, and for any surgical interventions, you can go with chlorhexidine based hand scrub solution. All the all are bactericidal, fungicidal, and virucidal. Sir. So triclosan for a daily use, and then regular in case use. if a regular use, in case of if you want a higher one. You can go for the 20% chlorhexidine and 4% chlorhexidine. But both are same. So both it's are one same. is weight and volume, weight for volume, and one is volume. volume. So now with this one, you might be confused whether it is a, a six-year-old, a mm -hmm. sixteen-year-old girl or a eighteen-year-old old woman. So you might be confused. You might be confused with that. Which one is the one? Which selection? So to remove your confusion, we made a one very quick chart. We made a very quick chart. Wherein we are use the chlorhexidine as one of alcohol and triclosan. So if you see that now in the case of virus, triclosan slightly goes few poorer in the case of viral side, whereas the chlorhexidine alcohol based has got a very good except the some amount of residual action and effect on the, the skin, which is very harsh. So that is what the take home message from this because alcohol plus chlorhexidine gluconate gives an excellent synergy. Sir, that's it. So even the, the molecular specialist also agrees with that chlorhexidine and alcohol combination works much better and the chlorhexidine in the nature of the COVID this one because of its poorer nature better to go for the chlorhexidine with alcohol based. Definitely. Definitely. And the only thing is so we are missing is MRSA. MRSA. MRSA which is there which is a potent in case of triclosan. So to substantiate whatever we say we have taken the, the list of the uh, references which we are referred and then these are all the guidelines and the references you see the combination of alcohol has a synergistic effect that's why we use both ethane alcohol and isopropyl alcohol and n propyl alcohol so if one fails if one denaturates the other one and then another my simple question to you is we'll be seeing the patient from one patient to when we are using we wash our hand and then sometimes uh, the, my, our hands may be completely not dry. Okay. In that cases, can the efficacy of the hand rub increase remains the same or decreases? No, sir. Always when you use the hand rub, you should be using you should be used on dry hands. Okay. If the if your hands are, are moisture, if your hands are moisture, it contains water molecules. Then it's not much more efficacy. If you always it is advocated to use on the dry hands. Then only it works wonder. Or else, if your hands are wet, you won't attain the maximum killing effect on your hands with hand rubs. Okay. 
so that that one of the things which we have to know is if you want to have a hundred percent efficacy of this and yes i applied the alcohol sanitary very good company and then if you don't follow the 100 percent protocol of dryness of the hand sometimes we may you have to use the dryer or we have to use the the um, tissue paper tissue. So to dry and then after that apply the hand rub and wait for about 30 minutes 30, 30 seconds. seconds and then it will be so these are all the the evidence which i showed you ethanol has got a greater effective against the viruses than isoprofile that's why the always the synergistic effects and then uh, we told about the bigonads also right. wherein the chlorhexidine uh, chlorhexidine is not a new to us we are using this chlorhexidine in case of dichlorohydrate diacetate and in case of digluconate also i given you the one of the lines which is this blood serum and other protein rich biomaterial can deactivate the microbial effect of the providin iodine but not chlorhexidine gluconate so that means if there is any residual amount of protein so that will be de uh, deactivated by providin iodine but it is not so in case of chlorhexidine sir what you say is chlorhexidine stands, stands far better than providin so that is the, the take home message of this and then uh, and another one is uh, one of the, the organism which the sir has mentioned is pseudomonas capsicia is the one which can be able to uh, it usually grows in polyinert in solution, solution itself during the manufacturing procedure itself so that is so to just to make you to this one uh, for a, a continuous listening for about a half an hour so to make you to your uh, mind so this is one of the, the this product. is one of our equipment bioflow it's a touch free uh, liquid and gel dispenser. It works with both battery and as well as PowerPoint. It has a made out of 304 steel, stainless steel grade. So one bottle of hand rubs will be fitted inside this and it works on a sensor base. Once you show your hands in front of sensor, it gives you the designated amount of hand rub on your hands. So need not to touch the pumps also. There will be total and there will be no contamination at all even at the level of bottle level so this is the nozzle assembly procedures how you have to insert the things for the bottle it's a self-explanatory video so it's very handy that can be plugged in your clinics also in the entry point It's almost weighs about only 2 kg. It can be also carried. It can be used as a portable one. In camps also you can use this. So welcome back after the uh, commercial break. Don't think it is a commercial <laughs> break as said. Just to make you to from the listening to the continuous listening. Just we are giving you the break. So the next we come to the, the heart of the substance of disinfectant. That is the surface and environment disinfectants. So the, our, the next home for me is the clinic. The next one operators which are stays more than my wife is the dental chair. You know, I always agree. I spend more time with the dental chair rather than my wife. So that is the dental unit. Cleanse, clean by the disposable toweling. So any FDA approved alcohol based disinfectant is the one which can able to. So here we divided this into Two setup. One is clinical contact, another one is housekeeping contact. Why? Because clinical contact are the one which has got a direct contamination, high potential for the spread of the microorganism and high spread of the, the, the infection procedure. Whereas the housekeeping, which is doesn't come in contact with the patients or the device, and then it has got a limited risk of disease transmission. So I can't use this. Can I use the both same product for both? No, sir. No. So it is not so. That means we are tailored the, the selection of the, the material where I should use. That is one of the one, not only from the economical point of view, but also from the getting the, the maximum benefit of that equipment or that infectant. So these are all the clinical contact area. I think so you are all familiar with this. Which are the part you touch more is your uh, handle, the light, and then headrest, backrest, and then arms, chairs, 
and then your air rotor that is the the trolley that is the tray which are fixed with the all type of uh, attachments including your air rotor micro motor laser or uh, scavatron or the scaler and then the working area and the other accessory to us is that we are working with the rvg the sensors or with a laptop or computer or the screen are the your keypads all these things are the clinical contact surfaces next the other environmental surfaces or housekeeping surface environmental surfaces are are the your mirror your uh, container where we are going to wash our hands and the back side of the chair and then in the arms supporting arms and the walls all these things are the housekeeping surfaces now we are going to segregate Oh, how we going to chair disinfect? It is very simple procedure. Oh, we'll just forward it. It is already oh, 45 minutes are over. So this is where we going to clean up the surfaces. So all the surfaces will be cleaned with the, the use of the surfactant. Disinfectant. Disinfectant. So now we have got the, the product. product. It's basically aerosep. It's a sprayable disinfectant solution which contains 70% isopropyl alcohol and 0.5% benzalkonium chloride. Doctors, do you? It, uh, the market has got many surface disinfectant sprayable solutions. Many many brands are there. Uh, you can use all. Many of the brands contains only alcohols, and some brand contains alcohol with glutaral gate. Here, aerosep contains isopropyl alcohol with benzalkonium chloride. The advantage I will list it out. The popular brands also got this uh, combination of alcohols. So when you spray with uh, the surfaces, the alcohol immediately evaporates by killing all the organisms which are present on the surfaces. What is next? There is no residual activity. No residual there is no persistent Absolutely activity. Correct. Some has got glutaral D8. It's an excellent combination of glutaral D8 with uh, iso isopropyl alcohol. alcohol. It takes care for the next residual activity. But the problem is the irritation. Glutaral D8 solution, as you know, it's a powerful irritant. So the it irritates your nasal respiration system and occupational hazards like asthma is quite common. Because when you spray and they ask your patients to sit on the chair with glutaral D8, he feels a lot of irritation, irritation in the eyes and as well as throat. So the D best is it's a benzalkonium chloride. It's a first generation quaternary ammonium compound. When you spray with this solution, initially the 70% alcohol takes care of all the organisms on the surfaces. It not only disinfects, it decreases the area also. Correct. Any visible soils, any greases, any oily material, slippage, it will get dissolved. So this benzalkonium chloride, it's not only acts as a disinfectant, it's a powerful surface active agent. It also cleanses the area and it forms a layer over your surfaces where for the next two to three hours, no organisms can form a biofilm on your surfaces. This is the advantage. You can use it during in between the cases also for your instruments. If you drop the instruments on particular chairs, or, or sorry, on your, your trays, and immediately want to disinfect means you can disinfect with this aerosep, or the entire chair can be disinfect, disinfected with aerosep. Sir, sir uh, our chair is a very costly equipment where we spend lakhs of rupees on this chair. And then most of the, the parts which are the powder coated, and then we have got a red seal, that is the, the type of a uh, covering which we uh, there. So with the repeated use of isopropyl alcohol or benzyl choline chloride, whether it disintegrates the any... Uh, no, sir, because uh, we are using this for so many years. So powder coated doesn't react with our alcohol or benzyl choline chloride. In, in other words, it will maintain your dental chair with a very good shape. shape. So uh, what the thing is, my colleagues, what the carry on message is, isopropyl alcohol and benzyl choline combination will be the much better you don't have to worry uh, we are spending about 10 lakhs for the chair or the 7 lakhs for the chair but the parts and the all the the coating and the vaccines are safe with the i want to add one more point here for the aerosol doctor in future in this era of covid i advocate after every single sitting you have to follow this spray early all these days you, you used to do after two three sittings Session. no now with every single person after he is getting treated, you have to take a little while, ask your guy to just spray all along the areas where he has come in contact with the surfaces and leave it for at least 25 seconds to 3 minutes 
it dries by itself or else if you are in a hurry you can use this sterile cloth to wipe the area and make it dry so we you can you we can use the micro uh, uh, fiber cloth to clean, clean it okay okay so that will be available in any of the amazon and flipkart you can go through it micro fiber cloth for cleaning of the dental chair now the next one is the for the cleaning of the critical area contact area of the clinical contact area so we have got a one of the combination of benzel phonium and isopropyl alcohol now the next two products it the sir will going to explain so uh, when you come to come across with environment and surface disinfectants you have got lot of combinations the the best and very simple is sodium hypochlorite mm -hmm. now uh, yes. everybody is started using sodium hypochlorite but when it comes to dentistry sodium hypochlorite solution has very limitations on the surfaces because as you told that your dental chairs are costly equipments it's sodium hypochlorite is highly corrosive agent highly corrosive highly corrosive agent it reacts with powder coatings it reacts with stainless steel you can't use randomly for maintenance of your dental cleaning so dental cleanings usually set up with a very posh uh, interiors will be done with well no uh, with very good uh, amount of uh, decorative, decorative items, items. items so sodium hypochlorite is not much more advocated to you people it is better to go with a quaternary ammonium compound based product so quaternary ammonium whether it's first generation second generation or third generation whichever is possible maximum you can go for quaternary ammonium compounds because the property of quaternary ammonium compounds is it is much more effective for both gram positive and gram negative organisms along with that they are powerful surface active agents they remove the dirt they take care of cleaning also oh, apart from it. disinfection so the first product is totasep it's a concentrated solution in the combination of 10% dihedral dimethyl ammonium chloride with polyhexamethylene bigonide this is a novel molecule that is phmb what we call it as it does not show any resistance to the any organism still there it's, it's a novel molecule a new molecule where western countries have been shifted this poverty nerdin 5% to polyhexamethylene bigonate for dressings and other things it's a very good antiseptic and dihedral dimethyl ammonium chloride is a third generation quaternary ammonium compound so the both when we mix it together it gives a excellent synergistic effect it covers maximum amount of organisms to destroy so the spectrum of activity is very wide so it's a broad, broad spectrum bactericidal fungicidal and virucidal so and and it's a economical also sir hmm. for dilution part for 10 ml in 1 liter of water has to be diluted and ask them to just mop the surfaces that is sufficient and it is colorless solution odorless solution and even in presence of patients you won't feel any smell that you have used some disinfectant yes very good sir that and is very important. inert very inert and user friendly and it can be used even in the food processing units and dairies also we are they are using this product it is excellent safety profile is there with this combination okay now the thing is uh, the next important component is the, the combination of uh, that is what you call as here this it comes for aerial fumigation part this is actually in uh, next is we have finished with surfaces and surfaces i will finish up with this microlyze also microlyze 4% benzyl ammonium chloride that is first generation quaternary ammonium compound this is uh, for general floors and Hard surfaces. hard surfaces when you patient come in for the waiting area you don't know from where and now he walks in so for the regular floor mopping you can go with microlyze that is 50 ml in half a bucket of water twice a day you can go for mopping mopping so that is sufficient sir so you categorize for general clinical area you go with microlyze which is much more economical product and for the clinical area you go for products for the surface disinfection surface. so that is so environmental uh, yeah. no you you save all your uh, lot of amount. lot of economy part because if you use microlyze for your uh, clinical segment also it may give it may not give you the desired results or else if you want to take extra care and if you want to use the clinical segment the total step in the area of general you will be wasting your money, money. So, so for general surfaces microlyze is sufficient for a clinical segment total surface okay. advocate about the silver side we will we will going to come up in the few fumigation uh, we will going to discuss the silver side component in the fumigation which we will be going to shortly we are going so the thing is what the sir says is uh, as a such as a dentist our operating area what we see we extract the teeth we cut the tissue 
we bleed the tissue we contaminate the environment everything we do but when I, we are planning for our our, our uh, what we call it as an operative area we fill up with a high level of uh, uh, decorative items we fill it up with the uh, uh, aquarium we fill it up with the unnecessary things a uh, costly item so when we do this type of uh, disinfectant procedure why can't we think our in future our dental clinic to set up as a small minor body wherein we don't require this type of decorative Decorative items items. or just a a plain enamel painting or just a wall of sheet uh, enamel poison is the best sir it is stainless steel sheet stainless steel works out with costly because stainless steel you have to go for three not four steel grade and above for the operation theaters so just a plain enamel plain enamel paint even without the false roofing false roofing may be possible it's good actually false chilling because it limits the area of your disinfection you can control the use of your disinfectant but don't you think that all the aerosol which we do can contaminate there and it is easy. when you fall, when you fumigate it will take care of that exactly. okay then we come to the silver side the next one so whatever we told here we have got a hypochlorite hypochlorite is a wonderful disinfectant sir hmm. the problem is is the carcin- uh, corrosion corrosion and it's highly unstable molecules also. Yes, it reacts with light, it reacts with uh, air, also. oxidation, oxidation process oxidation. is very fast. If you open the bottle of 10% uh, sodium hypochlorite solution once and you use it and you re- recap it and you keep and if we go for an assay, you find it will be not more than 3 or 4%. It's an highly, it uh, comes down with this efficacy. So sodium hypochlorite is not a new material or a new product for a dentist. We use every day, we see, we smell, we nourish the smell of this sodium hypochlorite. So that is the acidic pH is more better than that. And it is actually against the, as Sir told, it is against the spores and mycobacteria. So the only product, the only disadvantage is the corrosion. So corrosion when parts. we got a substitute to this one, you can think about this. Even the hardest uh, surfaces like granite, it will chip off. Chip off. Okay. So the next one is, so we are going into the alternative to the dental clinical sterilization. What type of material I have to choose? It should have a broad spectrum. It should have a bactericidal, fungicidal, virucidal, mycobactericidal, sporicidal, and it should not be carcinogenic to, to me or to the or any housekeeping workers, or it should not cause any non-mutagenic. Non-irritant is the first of all thing is eco-friendly and non-odor and easy to use. Yes. So can we have a one substitute for this as such? Spalding the scheme of classification. He has given the classification of the instrument what we use divided into critical, semi-critical and non-critical. Just to brush up that, what is the critical instrument when we do any type of surgical procedure wherein the, our instruments comes in contact with blood, blood, sera or with the saliva or with any type of this instrument, any type of this fluid, then it is a critical instrument. And, uh, now, whatever the instrument we use, we use burr, we use BP blade, we use the scaler, we use the uh, curates, all these things come and the drill is, all these things come. In that cases, any critical instrument, what you agree, sir, it should be a sterilization or a very, very high level of disinfection should be used. The next one is semi-critical one, which doesn't come in contact, but it comes in contact with mucous membrane, not with blood and blood products. Uh, only thing is, in that cases, what we advise is to use the one with this high level disinfection, that is the tuberculosidal activity. The next one is non critical instruments like your uh, X ray head, your uh, BP apparatus, your oximeter, pulse oximeter, all these things are the less chances for it to come in contact with the infection. So, to summarize that, we made a very flow chart that is critical, semi-critical and non-critical and then what are the intraoral use and then risk of transmission and then the what the procedure we have to follow in case of these instruments. So this is the steps, so that is the 10 commandments what we use, protective gear, preclinical, clinical, disinfection, drying, packing, right. autoclaving and chemosterilization and storage. So we'll start with one by one and the first part is cleaning. It is very, very crucial. Very, no, very, very important, sir. More than sterilization, if you want to attain a sterilization, proper cleaning is required. If you are not cleaning and your instrument is with of debris, the chances of either if you are going with chemical sterilization, like if you are using suppose glutaraldehyde, it fixes the peculiar property of glutaraldehyde is 
it's a very good fixative agent so it fixes the debris on your instruments if you not clean the instruments properly, properly. and if you keep it in the autoclave it will fix for permanently, permanently and it's very difficult to remove the biofilm over the instruments so cleaning should be attained and it is foremost importance if you clean your instruments with a multi enzymatic cleaners why multi enzymatic cleaners because the origin of the load is from either sugars or from the proteins or from the carbohydrates starch. carbohydrates starch and as well as uh, mm -hmm. fats fats so you select a multi enzymatic cleaner of any brand of any brand which contains protease amylase lipase cellulose so this is what the the so it has to be uh, basically 10 ml in 1 liter of uh, water has to be diluted this with multi enzymatic cleaners it can be used in both uh, ultrasonic baths and as well as manually 10 minutes immersion time should be given so that it breaks down all the fats which are added to your uh, instruments all the tissues or blood stains which are added to your instruments and all the sugar material which is contaminated your instruments it will break down you take it out, you rinse it with plain water, then you go for dry it, then go for chemical sterilization or autoclaving. So this is a very simple procedure. What we are showing you the blood and then we can remove the carbohydrate or all the products of the material things which has to be removed, material alba. So indirectly we are also removing the, the biofilm which is there. And then the one of the part that is very important, crucial part, we use the some hinge containing instruments. So in that cases, don't forget to clean the, the hinge part. Open up the instruments and clean the hinges. So to make your easy facilitation for cleaning and for your uh, assistant, we've got uh, six different types of uh, brushes which are available with the different textures of the, the brushes. Here we have got a, the, the uh, stainless steel one, we have got a soft one, we got a long, long one, we got a contoured one so to, to clean it to the, all the surfaces. The company which is there, which is the sale one instrument for and the cost of this the total of six uh, brushes will be somewhere around 2000 rupees to 2800 rupees. So, which is very easy for it. And then if you got a more money and then you can, apart from the, the manual one, if you have got a, can able to afford the use of the, um, Mm -hmm. ultrasonic, bath. ultrasonic bath it will be helpful and then you can use either the liquid or the cleansing and then uh, that too, which is the degrees of 50 to 55 degrees and then for 12 to 15 to 12 to 15 minutes is enough to completely clean and then when you are keeping it in a bath like this you know, where we have got an immersion trays so immersion trays can be used for a manual one when you are keeping the immersion trays please please keep open your instrument and then so that the, your uh, cleansing or your enzymatic action will can reach into the hinges. So one of the, the, the novel one is what we have discussed is the cleansing. Nice sir. Uh, cleansing, you have many brands. Here we, today we are discussing with only with the molecules. Molecules. Let us not go with a any particular brand. only one. one brand. Doctors can let them use whatever the brands they want. But it should, it should be a multi-enzymatic cleaner. Mm -hmm. Multi-enzymatic cleaner. One sincere advice is never allow your instruments to dry up. Dry. That is very, very important. It's once if you dry it, it takes a lot of amount of time to remove the biofilms. And if your assistant is not honest enough, you and your patients will end up in problem. Your life of the instruments will go off frequently, and a lot of fixation of biofilm will be found on your instruments. So the I, uh, what you are saying is the proper cleaning of the instruments gives you fifty percent of our sterilization. Definitely. Okay. So a proper cleaning of with a soap or with the, anything with the uh, enzymatic preparation can able to achieve the fifty percent of your sterilization. The next we'll go into the instrument sterilization, instrument disinfection procedure. Sir, sir. Uh, now we have two basically two chemicals for instrument sterilization all these days one is aldehyde based and one is aldehyde free molecules now the world is shifting from non for towards non aldehyde products because the drawbacks of aldehydes it is they are highly pungent liquids so the combination of glutaraldehyde and chemically bound form aldehyde is seen there in the market so the dangerous uh, fumes of aldehydes when you come across in the clinic it causes the headache, 
respiratory problems and occupational hazards like asthma is quite common in aldehyde. aldehyde. And it is highly evaporating liquid. You have to keep close always the lids when you use any aldehyde, glutaraldehyde or formaldehyde liquid. So now, according to WHO, you are not supposed to use chemically bound formaldehyde at all for the uh, sterilization or cleaning of instruments. So basically, the combination of glutaraldehyde plus benzalkonium chloride. Why benzalkonium chloride has given here means to take care of the cleaning property because they are powerful surface active agent. And glutaraldehyde, as you know, that it's a powerful broad spectrum sporicidal agent. So you can 50 ml in one liter of water. You can prepare this solution. Keep it for 14 days. As many number of instruments made out of rubber, glass, steel, porcelain. You can dip it for 30 minutes for high level disinfection. 30 minutes for high level disinfection. That means it kills up to mycobacterium tuberculi. And 5 to 5 hours for total sterilization with aceta or Cydex or glutaraldehyde solution or any other branch of glutaraldehyde based molecules. The minimum contact time should be 30 minutes for high level disinfection and 5, 5 hours for total sterilization. Sir. And the next, next is Novacid, that is aldehyde free molecule. It contains didical dimethyl ammonium chloride, that is third generation quaternary ammonium compound and polyhexamethylene bigonate. It comes in a concentrated solution. So, one for every one liter, you need to add 25 ml. 25 ml. It's a 40 times concentrated solution. Solution. 40x. 40 times. So, it's highly effective. It's an aldehyde free and it is colorless liquid, odorless liquid. It not only cleanses, it also disinfects and sterilizes your instruments at very faster rate. High level disinfection is seen in just 10 minutes. High level disinfection means, once again, I'm repeating, it kills up to mycobacterium tuberculi within 10 minutes and sterilization will take place within at 30 minutes. You are not supposed to keep your instruments more than 30 minutes. Why? Because of your turnaround time. You can't keep on ask your patients to wait for long duration of time because you are sterilizing your instruments. 10 minutes high level disinfection, you take care with no aside. 30 minutes means any metal when, in comes, when it comes in contact with water, the process of oxidation takes place. That means oxidation means nothing is rusting will take place. So we want to minimize the contact with water with any metals. So that we have attained with Novacite. It's a new molecule. New means we have launched it some six to eight years back. It's uh, well accepted in the market. And not only in dentistry, it's a very good molecule for the disinfection of scopes, particularly endoscopes, where their turnaround time is very less. Within 10 minutes, they can attain high level disinfection. And total sterilization within 30 minutes, it makes really wonder. So next, we have got one more novel. This time no, that is uh, Endomax r Cydex. That is a textbook product for you, doctor. When, since your studies, you will be studying Cydex, Cydex. The same 2.45% glutaraldehyde solution. But the drawback is you have to use an activator. Once you add an activator, all the solution has to be consumed within 14 days itself. So there is, you have to, even if you use only one liter out of five liters, you will be wasting remaining four liters, four liters of liters solution. solution. Because it comes in a can of five liters. That is the drawback of that. Now the new molecule orthothalad. So now we uh, the dentist from the orthodontist point of view, the any viewers are there orthodontist point of view. They the, what they use is they see minimum of thirty to forty patients per day okay. in a clinic, and then for the time given from one patient to another one is is the my minimum of about ten to fifteen minutes. In that uh, they can't have the thirty sets of uh, orthodontic instruments. So now my this thing is which is the best. Uh, for them to sterilize this within a shorter time of time. So the new molecule has come now that is called orthothalaldehyde. That is 0.55% orthothalaldehyde, uh, which is a ready to use solution. Here no activator is required. It's a mm -hmm. ready to use solution. Put it in a tray and to a level where your instruments get submerged. You drop it in that. Five minutes is the contact time. You can take it out. All use after using all the equipments or instruments with any chemical disinfections you need to rinse with sterile water because to remove the traces of aldehydes or any chemicals which are present on the surfaces of your instruments that is mandatory not with distilled water 
you have to rinse it with boiled and cooled water or sterile water. Your sterilizer will be there. You just rinse there in, in that. That is sufficient. And you pack it after drying it. After drying it. Yeah. That is the one of the... Sir, can we use the spirit? Can we use the that uh, whatever the isopropyl alcohol? Sprays. Or sprays. Sir, when you keep it, when you use the spray, it may not reach the beneath area. You have to submerge with. Or else you can submerge with alcohol itself. Okay. That is very this one. Most so, extensive. Uh, okay. It, uh, but the thing is, it should submerge totally. But if the contact should be there. Spraying beneath the area, you can't spare, spray it. When you keep it in a tray and you spray it, only the upper area upper will area be exposed to the chemical. And beneath, there won't be any contact of the disinfectant. So it's always advocated to submerge the instruments. instruments that is it. So for an orthodontist viewers, the one of the best combination is 0.5% aldehyde, And then it has got a non-corrosive product also. And then you can see that here we are given this substantial evidence that is 20 minutes exposure, 2% destroy mm -hmm. most microorganisms. And then you can see that uh, uh, orthothalaldehyde, which can be a reduction of about in five minutes, you have got excellent uh, mycobactericidal activity and it has got a good efficiency against the HPV, hepatitis virus, hepatitis C virus, and it is non mutagenic, non carcinogenic and it activation is not needed. One more point I want to add at the, uh, for this molecule so particularly. This orthothalaldehyde, one species of mycobacterium is there, which is not, which cannot be killed in glutaraldehyde. Okay. That is mycobacterium chiloni. chiloni. It will be killed in orthothalaldehyde. orthothalaldehyde. That is an added advantage with this. And we supply minimum effective checking concentration strips along with opahide. opahide. So oh, when you, before you go into the procedure, you can check whether the solution is alive or not. There will be a color changing reaction will be there in the chat. If the solution changes to that particular color, you can mm -hmm. think that the minimum effective concentration is there. So the bottle comes in a lap pack of 5 liters or 500 ml. Shelf life, when you start using it, it stays for 14 days. The remaining amount of liquid stays for 72 hours after opening the bottle. So this is the one of the, 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 the novel combination. And then another thing is it is available with the, the check strip wherein to assess the, the minimal concentration, minimal effective concentration. And even for the uh, glutaraldehyde, you have got a, a solution test strip to monitor the, the minimal effectiveness. The We come to the, till now we have discussed about the hand rub and then we discussed about the hand scrub and then we discussed about the, the surface. contact uh, surface disinfectant and then instrument surface disinfectant and these are all the some of the accessory products which we use in the dental practice so like uh, antiseptic and skin preparation rust rumal so we go ahead with the very fast one so the two team uh, sir surgiprep chx and surgiprep chx these are this is for the painting of your area where i because we don't promote much of the powdering based molecule because now we are moving very fast towards the advanced technology. So according to the US CDC guidelines, the combination of isopropyl alcohol and chlorhexidine gluconate gives the synergistic effect to the maximum extent up to the residual active tip to seven hours you can see in this combination. So for painting the area, you can paint with this solution. It defects the area, disinfects the area and marks the area, sir. Yes. So powdering iodine, you can't use on the Thyroid patients, the polyneurin uh, 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 cannot be used on infants, infants. but uh, Surgiprep CHX, that is the combination of isopropyl alcohol and chlorhexidine gluconate or the combination of isopropyl alcohol with benzalkonium chloride, you can use this on these patients. And the advantage is when you uh, prepare the skin, uh, prepare the area, initially you wash with detergent, then you apply alcohol. After drying the alcohol, you apply the polyneurin solution. But here, it's an inbuilt sink. It contains alcohol, it contains antiseptics. Just paint is sufficient. So for the viewers, in case if you are carrying out the procedure of impaction, if you are carrying out the procedure of any implant, wherein you need to have a 100% so disinfection of the perioral structure and the, the chin, chick, uh, chin and cheek region, and even in the neck region, you can depend on this chloro And, and it very fastly dries out. Dries out. Very good, sir. That is the, the one of the, one of the, this one, Immediate action will be there and then the non-greasing it. 
and then uh, as a dentist we invest more on the instruments our forceps one one forceps may cost you somewhere around 1500 ash and medis and all these forceps so one we come across is the rust in and around <laughs> the hinge area so sometimes when we used to do the extraction we used to open with both the hands about the hinges so for that uh, now oh, is there any solution yes, sir technically speaking once the rust means we have to throw it out but <laughs> in our <laughs> scenario with all the feedback from the doctor we have launched a product that is zapress that is a rust remover it contains inorganic acids up to not less than 30% and non ionic surfactants so it has to be diluted at the concentration of 10% solution dip your instruments in that for 10 minutes if the uh, if you have very harsh uh, rust rusting brush it with the hard brushes after 10 minutes it removes all the rusting sir so you uh, the one of the the good news for the breaking news now we are got a breaking news from the tv channel channel 9 is the for the you don't have to throw your the forceps costly forceps we got a solution that is the the rust remover in this cases you can use i am using this from past to 5 years very good product and then very good results and the only thing is after the rust removal rinse it in water and then subject the patient subject the instrument to the sterilization so the next part which is very very this one is this the tubing system wherein we have got a tubing where we have got a uh, low vacuum suction high vacuum suction and then so here the der as it is the one uh, novel uh, formula that is the the md 555 so the cleaner for which contains organic acids and phosphoric acids and non phosphoric surfactants so, surfactant. so uh, since i didn't find the product in the biofuel that i had to take it from the dark no uh, so this is the one of the ways we had to uh, dislocate the the suction unit and then if there is an amalgam uh, separators are there we have to displace this and then we have to clean the uh, your uh, sink and then we have to disinfect it This is a very good product. Uh, that is the this thing. I think so. Uh, till now, I am using this dart, and then with the uh, idea from the uh, sir, we'll take it into the consideration that is there any product which is there be cheaply available for the disinfecting of this tubing system, because so uh, in the tubing system there is lot of amount of uh, bio load that is the uh, biofilm formation will be there, and then the repeated usage of this one. Who will cause the the cross contamination? So most of the high end air chair will be equipped to be to the cleaning of like this uh, cleaning of the the tubing system. But since uh, our chair which is not so effective like that, so you can do the manual. You can remove it and then clean it manually. And then with the nova side, you can use it. That is what I am using. Even we have got a uh, Dell MD triple five. If you can able to use this one. And then now the comes is the as a dentist we use the the specs and then the, because of the coronavirus aerosol and all those things and we also use the magnifying loops which uh, magnifies the the area of work so we have got a uh, this wing we are asked to be searched in this one aqua lens contains the iodinized water polydimethyl siloxanone isopropyl alcohol and alkaline pulver when i am discussing with the sir the sir told you can also use the aerosol also yes yeah, sir also uh, and then he can assure he has assured that there is no damage on to the lenses or the magnifiers or even to the the, the plastic one so even the repeated uh, applications of the isopropyl alcohol will not damage the any of the plastic items so that is the how to disinfect now we go into the most debated topic in the our united dentist and in the day my so dentist is which where to contain foaming foaming and fumigation and another one is fogging fumigation and fogging so to make you to understand that uh, fumigation is the formaldehyde based yeah, which is the conventional with, method it means fumigation is a conventional method doctor where the potassium permanganate and formaldehyde liquid mm. has to be mixed together and keep it for fumigation in a fumigator so it releases the formaldehyde yeah. fumes the shutdown period is 12 hours after 12 hours you have to neutralize with ammonia and that we will go to discuss yeah. uh, the next fogging next is fogging that is the advanced technology where you have lot of uh, molecules for uh, fogging where you will generate the fogs in the similar size of the bacterial size only that are in the nanometer size the fogs will be created 
so it will be easily reacting with the bacteria which are present in the air and it takes care of the killing of the organisms that is what we do. so now we are given a very good this differentiation between the cons and prons between these two products and then you can read it so one of the formaldehyde you know that is a cancerogenic and then whenever when you are in a dissection also you know how much you suffered from the irritation of the eye and the smell and all these things and then we don't want the same to happen to the our patients also and it is not safe for the personal because of the irritation and another one is that is the hair air handling unit that means we after the fumigation we need to <laughs> yes sir uh, you have to neutralize it neutralize I mean, it that is a huge problem and the irritation persists sir. for a day long it it, if mm. the irritation persists and you feel a lot of uh, nasal irritation eye irritation will be there and more or who and cdc has not at all giving any permissions to use formaldehyde for for of fumigation that is out of outdated subjects sir. so now you say that that uh, fogging or the is the as good as uh, fumigation sir the concept is here fumigation or fogging what they will do they have they will disinfect the particles or microorganisms which are present in the air so suspended so in the air. air it is nowhere connected with any surfaces i agree it goes and falls on the surfaces and it takes care of the surfaces also yes. but initially fumigation or fogging is meant to disinfect the air or air which are present in the your clinical yes. area so the new technology is fogging sir yeah a fogging machine has to be used you can use any brands of of uh, disinfectants or foggers according to the dilution you can load the solution in the fogging machine and allow required contact time for your area after calculating your length breadth and height of your clinic and you can uh, fog your area the shutdown period is just one hour for all the all the molecules today all the molecules that minimize the contact period for just one hour you can shut down the period for uh, the area then you can carry out with the procedure sir so the thing is the more the time you were you spend in the clinic more the money okay that is the way more, more. so i uh, we have got a novel this thing wherein you don't have to wait for your clinic to be get ready immediately so in that cases you can use the hydrogen peroxide with the the combination of silver the another one is the residues of hydrogen peroxide decomposes into the hydrogen and water so you don't have to wash just to wipe mm -hmm. the the hydrogen peroxide decomposes to water and hydrogen nascent oxygen nascent oxygen there won't be any trace of hydrogen and i hope it's water and uh, nascent oxygen nascent oxygen oh, good sir i will correct it okay the next one is the, what are the ideal requirement of the disinfectant you know that it should be broad spectrum including the spores it has to be less time because we can't she uh, uh, wait for uh, 7 to 8 hours and then the safe for the instrument safe for healthcare professional user friendly and cost effective and non irritant the novel this thing is hydrogen peroxide and silver combination and phmd that is a polyhexamethylene there with uh, dyed ethyl ammonium chloride chloride and another one is third generation qc yes sir sir for your dental clinics because we are dealing only with dental dentists here you have to use fogging now to open the your clinic you need a fogging because there will be a lot of amount of organisms which are present because it's so almost intact the fungal growth will be you can expect a large amount of fungal growth will be there in suspended in air the thing is you have a aldehyde based molecules you have quaternary ammonium based compounds and you have hydrogen peroxide based compounds well, available for fogging for your fogging area what do i suggest is if you select quaternary ammonium compounds they you have a chance of getting your surfaces sticky sticky mm. that is the drawback of quaternary ammonium mm. compounds when you fog it and over the period of time the color will change on the surfaces of aluminum partitions, partitions glasses and everything so quaternary ammonium compound let us not try it next when come to third generation quads it's also comes under quaternary ammonium compound, compound only next glutaral dates glutaral dates if you use for fogging you know the irritations yes i leave about formaldehyde but still glutaral date based products are available for fogging fogging oh, it's available glutaral date but once you fog your area with glutaral date the amount of irritation the patients who walks in will complain a lot of irritation will be there he can't open his eyes because he will be continuously opening his eyes when you are operating on it 
so irritation will be there you will you may sneeze also during your procedure yes, where it will hamper your procedures, procedures working thing so hydrogen peroxide with silver ions it is a the best combination for your uh, clinical setup why i will tell means there is no residues no stickiness no smell no damage to no the damage body. no 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 sir i won't say no damage because you have decorated with so many things see all these days fumigation was the concept was only Maybe for OT. ot and, and sterile manufacturing units of pharmaceutical industries okay now in pharmaceutical industry everything will be in stainless steel now in hospital segments many of the advanced hospitals have standardized with steel ot only or else at least they will be equipped with very good uh, vitrified tiles or granites or marbles so the concept was very easy fumigation means there won't be any decorative pieces decorated things in the clean uh, in the operation the theater or in the production level now the scenario has been changed because you have to combat with so many things there are a lot of decorative pieces in his, in your clinic so i don't know what are the materials they are made out of so the steels which is above 304 steel grade will not get affected because hydrogen peroxide and silver nitrate when it mixed with water it releases nascent oxygen. oxygen so don't get confused that silver ions means they are pumping the silver ions into the air the silver ions is it very 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 low amount that is only 0.01 percentage in this combination means it acts as a catalyst to faster the rate of reaction to release the nascent oxygen when this is thrown out of the fogging machine at 5 to 15 nanometer size it the nascent oxygen mixes with air creating a fog in the in your area and it mixes with organisms it totally kills the organisms so it doesn't leave a droplets or wet wet things in your clinics it doesn't interfere with any of your stickiness on the surfaces it is inert no smell will be there no irritation will be there no stickiness will be there this is the safest for your dental, dental setup. setup this combination of hydrogen peroxide plus silver nitrate only thing is if you got a monitor if you have got a yeah. piece, cpu Sir, so i will give i will give you the procedure of fumigation so okay we'll show this demo no before that uh, we can during the demo also we ah, can suggest ah, sure. initially ask the your uh, housekeeping or your assistant to mop the floors of the solution with the same solution what you are throwing with fogging machine fogging with fogging machine that has to be according to the manufacturing guidelines you have to mop the area cover all the electronic gadgets with sterile or plastic drapes after disinfecting it with aerosol or any other brands of alcoholic spray sprayable liquids cover those monitors electronic gadgets turn off the acs turn off the lights no, no electric equipment should be turned on during the fumigation sir. the machine should be placed at 45 degree angle and the solution as according to your area for 1000 cubic feet area 5 minutes fogging is sufficient doctor oh that is most of our theory will be within Ten, usually 10 by 10 by 10 will be your working, working area. area so 5 minutes sufficient for okay. fogging okay sir 1000 cubic feet requires only 400 ml of diluted solution that means length breadth and height. height you have to calculate length breadth and height that gives the cubic feet means 10 feet length 10 feet height 10 feet breadth means it comes to 1000 cubic feet this 1000 cubic feet area requires only 400 ml diluted solution to kill all the organisms which are present in the air that to 40 ml of solution and 80 ml of silicide 320 ml of water, water and it has to be fogged for 5 minutes. minutes shut down the OT for uh, shut down the area for one hour. Open it up and carry on with all your electric things immediately. immediately. So one hour we leave to the shut down period has to be one hour. One hour. No compromise in that because if you don't give give the sufficient time, you Nine can't minutes. expect the results. So this is how the the fogging machine works, and then it is uh, proven that it is effective as even in the some of the the high level of uh, heart cardiac centers also, which is proven. Even in neuro what is they go for this sir. neuro what is yes. and there won't be any stickiness so slipperiness when you walk with the chapels in the clear what is sometimes you might see that touch that yes. uh, stickiness will be there that you won't find with this hydrogen peroxide based oh, molecule no thinking i am thinking of the concern to the dentist 
or how much they had to invest further to open after the post covid scenario so these are all the products and application area and then we are come to the the last stage of the acknowledge so the this whatever the presentation would not be possible without the help of uh, jss academy of higher education and research and uh, in collaboration with the jss dental college sister concerned of jss and uh, i'll thank the president the secretary and treasurer of idda dental association and mysore branch and then first of all i had to mention some few names who are all uh, uh, key workers in this uh, webinar is dr raghunath vice president uh, state dental ida and treasurer ida mysore and the the genius of the the uh, oh, in the jss is dr prashant s yes, assistant director of academic he is the key person for this uh, webinar to come into your to your level and to your home level and then i thank the biashield and division of tulip for providing the all the necessary uh, information regarding the products and first of all thing is i thank my dearest colleague and friend uh, mr das prasad for sharing his knowledge and uh, without any hesitation so thank, thank you, you thank you doctor for giving a wonderful opportunity to share a little bit of my knowledge towards the uh, disinfection of the dental clinic where you take lot of uh, care for your patients so for the the mysore he is residing in mysore any product any queries or anything not only that related to this company any company anything please. on the disinfection i can share my knowledge on my number this is the number and then the products are available in the kumar diagnostic and surgical that is the is the the main person that is the subramanian is the dealer so you can note down this number if you want to have any product for your usage when you are opening your clinic sir dr raghunath sir and prashant sir thank you thank you uh, dr uh, jay shankar sir and uh, mr das prasad uh, i would request you to uh, stop sharing the screen so that we can see you live because the participants have been very active and participating very ardently with lot of questions for you and i feel when i was uh, moderating these questions they were all very practical questions so i request you to uh, stop sharing the screen so that we can start with the question and answer sessions Yeah, Once again, thank you so much uh, to Dr. Uh, Jai Shankar sir as well as Das Prasad. You have comprehensively covered all the areas which required attention to, especially when we are opening our dental clinics now with this care of COVID-19. And you will be very surprised that we have got very very intuitive questions. Uh, and i am very uh, happy to put forward these questions for you which is actually going to be an eye opener for all the dentists around uh, so that we can practice with better caution so one of that would be specifically what is the disinfectant of choice for dental chair water lines i would like to direct this question to mr das prasad so what will be the uh, choice of the chemical for water line in today's day of what is available sir uh a product which uh, we have a product called pure safe that is a sachet of 2 grams each which will disinfect the water of a amount up to 500 liters of water can be disinfected with just 2 grams of water sachet uh, sodium dichlor isocyanurate powder that can be dropped into your tank it would take care of the organisms the type contact time should be minimum 30 minutes sir so that water can be used for your clinic for treatment purpose Sir, that Thank the you. whatever the water is portable, drink it. Yeah, you can drink it. So that uh, safe to drink, even to the safe for the patient, and even for the safe for the instrument. Yes. That the cost of that packet is three rupees per packet, sir, which will disinfect you five hundred liters of water. Liters, sir. Very comprehensive, and thank you for that answer. Moving further, there have been questions about, uh, you know, we have got lot of chemicals in the form of dental materials stored in our cupboards, and usually. Uh, you know post pre covid era we used to have the dental materials around our dental chair so that it is easily you know, accessible and uh, we can go ahead and collect the material mix it dispense it and use the material on the patient 
but now i know that there has to be some modifications made for storage of dental materials but having said that what is your opinion about fogging with the presence of dental materials in the operatory do you recommend that are there going to be any changes in the dental material properties because of fogging it should be covered with a plastic sheets or drapes sir because we don't know the what are the materials they are made of so when you come to, comes in contact with this fogging it settles on the surfaces of the things and it may interfere with the the reaction may happen so it is always advocated electronic gadgets equipment should be instrument should be covered with the drapes and pharma and uh, uh, materials yeah. any uh, uh, restorative or any materials which we use should be kept it in covered or covered should be closed closed and uh, i should uh, compliment uh, dr jay shankar that uh, during the infection control committee of jss uh, dental college and hospital he had suggested that there be a separate storage units for dental materials which are kept away from the clinical operatory it be dispensed and then used so that they will not get contaminated also during this uh, fogging process they will not get affected so this is one of the very good uh, propositions given by him during the infection control committee this saves a lot of money and you know it also prevents the failure of uh, the treatment protocols if it is done properly so thank you for that gentlemen and moving further uh, there has been a question about autoclave uh, is there any uh, specific chemical which needs to be used along with autoclaving because of this covid i know you have answered this that autoclaving is uh, uh, you know going to be very harsh on viruses and viruses are very sensitive to autoclaving what do you, what is your take on that no i think it's not required any chemical agents along with autoclaving sir uh, Type of autoclave we if we have got the the higher end of the golden standard is B class, then N class, E, C class, and E class. So this is not the 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 to discuss about the autoclave. It will take minimum about half an hour. What is the difference between B class and what the difference in N class and C class? Why there is a difference in the economical state from the two lakh eighty thousand to the thirty or forty thousand autoclave? There is a lot of things just to be discussed. but only thing is my this thing whatever the knowledge is for autoclaving we don't require any type of chemical yes definitely thank you sir so moving further we have discussed over our hand sanitization and sanitization of uh, uh, you know immediately after the procedure we have to sanitize hands and before the procedure we have to sanitize hands there is been a very intriguing question here uh, in spite of use of mouth masks and face shields we see that the face the parts of the face can get exposed to these particulate matters so is there any disinfectant which is very safe to use to clean the face and facial surfaces is it there available uh right now we don't have any product for uh, face sir because when it comes to a cosmetology if something happens on the surfaces because people uh, the what do you call uh, legalities of it allergies might be possible with some because face is very sensitive area where they use a lot of cosmetics if they react with that it's uh, till now we have not come across with pro any product like that sir so i think this is a unique webinar platform wherein you are not just giving idea about uh, your products you are taking idea from our dentists for developing your products probably <laughs> to my company for the r&d purpose <laughs> excellent do. excellent so i thank the dentists for uh, you know giving such wonderful ideas and uh, the inquisitiveness and attentiveness in this uh, webinar has been you know stupendous in uh, when getting these questions asked and next is a uh, few of the uh, people and most of them have asked about the pricing of your of your products i think at the end of this webinar we are going to give your contact number as well as your uh, contact details i think i will be requesting dr ragnath at the end of this webinar to uh, give these details about you uh, then i think they can contact you for this pricing availability costing and uh, purchasing right is so definitely a common for entire mysore doctors a single price will be maintained in kumar diagnostics by monday so whatever the price is there it will be uniform for all the doctors sir don't think that some some ex, ex person will be charged with a different rates and some other people will be charged more it will be a uniform price for all the ida and we follow it the only thing is stocks has to come because of the lot of uh, manufacturing and transportation issues We are awaiting the stocks. Stocks has to come, but the, but we have got some stocks. Enough stocks are there, and then uh, uh, can you concession, sir? Sir, definitely, yeah. sir. For uh, dentists, we are offering a good cut because many of the times, what you will do, you give some orders to the people who come, walk into your clinics, 
and you are for we have come across that you are purchasing many of the hand rubs at mrp rates mrp rates yes. please don't waste your money on that you contact the genuine distributors who are authorized distributors for the companies you go to them you get lot of discussion with them suppose i don't may take any names of any distributors or any retailers but when you go to a first distributor that is who is authorized distributor from the company you will get a maximum discount i am not talking only for kumar diagnostics or anything you use any brands of uh, products you take a details where this is a, who is your authorized distributor for this company you go to him he will give a better price don't just give your orders to the walk in people who are giving you the chemicals they will charge you on the mrp the difference between the mrp and the real price what you are getting will be a huge huge you can get one more bottle of that sir uh, i request uh, prashant uh, sir and uh, raghunath sir and then uh, on the behalf of the idea a one small request is so since we are opening and then we can't invest so much on the pagar so my suggestion to the das pagar since he is there and then most of the audience are also there why can't we have one pagar uh, uh, by them and then keep it on the rental basis uh, in the distributor wherein they can use then then they can purchase the uh, material and then they can use it and then bring it back on a rental basis if it is there any product from your this thing it is be helpful so each day they can book the this thing and then they can park it and then with the nominal fees of uh, per, per rent it is be helpful uh, once when they are well approved once when they after the opening of this uh, this one i am putting it forward directly and not spoken to him before also about this uh, in case if it is there it will be beneficial for the the idea so sir, uh, uh, sir uh, i am ready ready to do, do that but the thing is right now i don't have a machine in so to give us on a certain time basis because before that is from 18th to 20th of march because the government has issued a circular to use fogging in dental clinics the panic buying has been done by the dentists i have sold 8 to 10 machines within 2 days where none of a dentist has purchased one fogging machine in entire five years we keep the stocks only for hospitals for fogging machines I had some 10 machines with uh, my distributor within 2 days i exhausted all the 10 machines all was built only for dentists not for any other hospitals so please i will look it into that that some demo machines are there in my company means i will ask my people to get it to my so and circulate among you people i don't want any financial help for the rents also you can use it but i can't carry it to every mm. each and every clinics that's left to you i give to dr jay shankar he can circulate among your communities i don't have any issues but i will arrange for a demo machine i need some time uh well uh, gentlemen thank you so much for being so honest with the pricing and giving a good uh, a suggestion for the benefit of all dentists you know these kind of gestures take us a long way and uh, it's a very welcome and uh, uh, very appreciable gesture from uh, uh, you people and it will definitely be appreciated by indian dental association as well as all the dentists of my and for your uh, information uh, let me tell you we were expecting that uh, we have got uh, dentists from only mysore in this platform but i was surprised to see that i am getting questions from delhi meerut noida uh, uh, the, the 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 lists are going and we are having dentists from all over india for this webinar and this is a history in the making that uh, you know senior dentists of mysore junior dentists of mysore some of the students and upcoming interns who are studying at jss dental college and hospital who are thinking of beginning their practice in mysore as well as uh, you know senior professors and uh, young and energetic clinicians it has been a mixed array of participation in this and i am very surprised uh, i think this is a platform which has created history for the first time where all the dentists of mysore irrespective of their seniority their academic and clinical backgrounds gender and in, in, in including those with other geographic locations we have come together so we are having some questions for you whether your products are available in delhi but i'll take that little later and i'll give you the context so that you can approach them going further there has been a very specific question which is very important here uh, spraying and fogging in fact this is about uh, spraying of uh, 
disinfectants for uh, aerosol control, uh, atmospheric and environmental surface disinfection? Will it be harmful for patients with asthma or hyperactive airway disease or any allergic condition? Can you please throw some lights on that? Using quaternary ammonium compounds or glutaraldehyde solutions will definitely interfere with this. That's why I advocated that the use of hydrogen peroxide because once you mix with water, it just breaks down to water and nascent oxygen. That is not creating any problem to your uh, respiratory system. But yes, glutaraldehyde, it definitely interferes and quaternary ammonium compound also irritates. It but, irritates. Yes, thank you so much. But uh, we can have this included in one of the protocols suggesting that when we take the medical history of patients, we identify if there are any patients with these particular histories. And if we have uh, disinfected the clinic overnight, probably it, was, it is wise to call such patients in the first appointment in the beginning and then go ahead with fogging or uh, surface or aerosol uh, atmosphere disinfectant. What is your take, sir, Dr. Jayashankar, sir? On this? Yes, sir, that is a valid suggestion because uh, the, nowadays so most of the patients with asthma, allergy and then upper respiratory tract infection and the lower respiratory tract infection with the MRI, with the COPD and other patients, which requires the, some amount of uh, this thing, uh, precaution test to be taken. So when we are taking the medical history, please make it a note that in case that it is there, so either you do the fogging after their procedure or after the leaving some time for about so after six to seven hours, that is the better suggestion. Thank you, sir. Now, one of the most intriguing questions here is, uh, here we avoid uh, the mattresses or uh, we avoid the uh, use of soft cushions or we avoid the use of carpets in the dental clinic. Now, does that have any implications when we are going ahead with fogging or fumigation? A lot, sir. Now, you have to remove all those things, all decorative things, carpets, everything has to be removed. It should be totally either granite, vitrified tiles, whichever is possible, that is best. Where if a continuous mopping is there twice or thrice in a day, that will put your microbial load to a very lesser extent. Thank you for a very specific answer. Most culprit things is carpets. They harbor the organisms. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a specific answer. Now, uh, before we start our dental practices, all these uh, uh, soft cushion and uh, harboring, uh, uh, you know, uh, which can, which were used previously, now has to be removed and we have to make it uh, as much possible uh, you, you free environment. Less decorative, very yes. less decorative, no additional show pieces, uh, anything to be decorated on the walls. It should be all clear. With just enamel paint is sufficient. Very good. Very good uh, message there. There must be some good uh, thoughts in our dentist going on. And also, use of footwear. We recommend use of footwear. May it be a different one inside the clinical area, another one outside the clinical area. But now, footwear is also one of the harboring uh, uh, agents for all these organ organisms. What is your take on that? Uh, Dr. Jayashankar sir, would you want to throw some light on how do you disinfect the use of footwear? Is it required now? There are some changes in the protocol that we should not wear it in the clinical area. What do you say? We should not allow them to wear it in the clinical area. It is a, because one of the study in the, do, done in the Spain, wherein the, the, the footwear is one of the put as a culprit in cases of COVID virus and all these things, uh, MRS, COPD patients, and then in case of respiratory distress, so better not to allow the footwear. In case if they want to allow, let them use the, this one uh, footwear, which is extensively used for the clinical purpose. So they can provide the footwear or nowadays shoe covers. Uh, shoe covers. Disposable shoe covers are there. We can use that disposable shoe covers in case if they want to allow that. What do you say, sir? So we don't so have any... Uh, can we, can we take it as a protocol that uh, all the external footwear, that means footwear which are being used for the external outside uh, areas, be left outside the clinic and when people are inside, outside when people the, are inside, yeah. In area, you shouldn't allow the footwear. So footwear of the patient is going to be outside and when they come inside, use of uh, covers and uh, specific uh, footwear meant for the clinical purposes can be used but definitely with covers. That will be the new protocol. Yes, sir. That is better. Thank you, sir. Another important question. 
day to day we will be using this we will be needing this we will require a very strong answer for this what is the best chemical or agent used for disinfection of impressions and casts before they are you know processed and sent to the labs so the matter of what is that it is made up of alginate and then rubber based impressions rubber so this question has got two dimensions two angles one is immediately after taking the impressions we have got the alginate impressions so how do we disinfect the alginate impression is the first dimension to this question and the second dimension would be after we have made the casts out of it how do we disinfect the casts before communicating to the labs uh, uh sir uh, till now uh, i am using the sodium hypochlorite for disinfecting the alginate the spray of 0.1% which is there and then uh, uh, whatever the according to the the, the last person even he says that we can use the phmc and ddc which is as good as effective and then contact time of 30 minutes is enough to disinfect the impressions 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 is minutes. enough 10 minutes is enough he says thank you sir thank you for the specific uh, response on that now we have got a question on patient waiting area what is your recommendation for disinfecting the patient waiting area because we should not only be safe inside the operatory we should also keep it safe for the patients waiting in the waiting area so what is your recommendations for that what are the agents which are available for dentists sir any good floor mopping agent is sufficient sir but the time duration earlier you used to mop per day only once or twice now you have to repeat it more number of times that is the only solution that fulfills the uh, necessity sir suppose if your uh, turn around time is only once a day or twice is a day now by hourly you have to mop the mop areas the area. of the common areas when you receive the patient that area should be mop quite often often the microlyse have suggested and any soda hypochlorite suppose if your uh, floors are made out of with very good uh, vitrified tiles you can use that any sodium hypochlorite solution which is very can be used we quaternary ammonium compounds are best because your aluminum fixtures stainless steel fixtures are there it may react with sodium hypochlorite solution but if you go with quaternary ammonium based compounds the corrosion can be controlled only the thing is duration of hours means you, may, you should make a protocol by hourly or hourly based mopping should be required along according to the traffic of your clinic i'm sure by uh, telling about uh, mopping you also are referring to the door knobs and door handles as well during the uh, yes. patient waiting area you will be including the entry door knobs and as well as the levers yes. so that aerosept you have to spray it wherever common touch the area is there aerosept is there that isopropyl alcohol it can be spraying so that uh, makes it imperative that even in the waiting area the notice boards the uh, posters the wall hangers for the decoration even for the education of patients all of them have to you know see their uh, days end isn't <laughs> it well another question is many of our clinics have got uh, screens they they might be in the form of uh, screens for uh, rvg or they may be in the form of uh, patient education monitors uh, televisions so what is the best uh, uh, chemical or an reagent for cleaning mobile phone screens and computer screens or television screens so to clean uh, see it's a very sensitive issue the manufacturers of tvs or monitors they do not advocate to use any alcohols on the surfaces or any uh what do you call quaternary ammonium surfaces to clean the screens but it's left to the manufacturers they should come out because if i advocate any molecules if something happens to your tv or tv monitors then i will end up in a problem you can follow the guidelines of the manufacturers of the monitors because what they say is some solutions they are giving from their own brands like samsung or anything they are giving the cleansers cleansers doesn't serve the purpose of disinfection so best thing is this what i suggest is to use the so but uh, i think so what sir says is correct 
We don't have no, because uh, higher end LEDs they use in your clinic, sir. They advocate not to use alcohol, alcohol correct. or not to use choline also to clean. So we have not designed any designed any product to clean them, sir. not to disinfect them, not clean, disinfect them. So this is the second point, food for thought for you from this webinar, an innovation for cleaning the computer screens, monitors as well as mobile phones safely. Yeah, computer screens, the, the uh, monitors which were there in the OTs, that uh, uh, anesthesia machine monitors, everything that can be, we, we are cleaning today with aerosol only. That we are cleaning in that. But this higher end, what you keep in your dental clinics are very costly LED TVs that you have to uh, go follow the guidelines of the manufacturer. Well, uh, 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 but the questions are simply pouring down uh, in a lot of numbers, but I'm trying to you know, take the most important questions and I feel every question is very important because from a practical perspective, they are all asking you know, very relevant questions. Another question is about AC vents. Is there any product available in your stable for uh, disinfecting the AC vents? Sir, AC we just suggest don't use the AC at all. Yeah, that is the best practice to follow because, sir, AC ducts, many of the people, what they do is, they use this fogging machine only continuously for five to six minutes into the duct because every now and then we can't open the ducts and clean the surfaces of the ducts because the biofilm will be formed there. The webs will be there. You can't remove that. If just what they will do is just for five to 10 minutes, they will throw this uh, same fogging solution into the ducts when they turn it off the AC. So better thing is not to use the AC in dental clinics. We okay, don't so have a product with the ducts of the inner ducts of the AC. 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 So this so is the third uh, uh, innovation uh, point. Disinfectant, but it's very difficult to clean the uh, AC ducts. Disinfect the AC duct. Third innovation no, point. But the best filter, thing. Using HEPA filters, 100% we can control the uh, particulates in the area. But the thing is, HEPA filters cost is very expensive. And it, it should be frequently. For every in six months, you have to change the HEPA filters. One HEPA filters may cost in lakhs together. That is very difficult to maintain in the dental clinics. Now, that can be done in only OTs. HEPA filters can be put in OTs, in uh, neuro OTs, uh, cardiac OTs. They are practicing that with negative pressure. Thank you. And uh, maybe we can have a small suggestion from our end and request from our end that if you can make sprays, which can be you know, sprayed into the uh, uh, AC ducts through the openings, maybe things could be better. So I will leave it to you and your R&D section to work yeah. on that. We can assume that we have done something for the AC disinfection. It doesn't give under percent result. Just you spray it. You, you can spray it any liquid. You can spray it the silvicide. You can spray aerosept. You can spray even only spirit also. If you spray it with sprayer gun, you're, uh, you just you can think that I have sprayed and it has been got disinfected. No, AC ducts cannot be so easily disinfected. So that leaves us with only one option no use of AC so that we remain safe. Or else use HEPA filters. HEPA filters. What a costly affair. So it's a delicate balance between the two. All right. There is another question. If uh, we have wooden paneling in the waiting area or in the uh, clinical operatory, what is the uh, take of, uh, what is your take on safety of fogging or fumigation in the, on the wooden plat platforms or the surfaces, panelings? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Could you, could you repeat the question? No, yeah. I didn't get your question. Yeah, I, I will repeat the question. Uh, what is your take on safety of usage of fumigation and fogging with uh, wooden paneling in the waiting area or in the operatory? Is it safe? Fumigation or fogging with wooden paneling? Sir, let us not use the word fumigation at all. That has gone because there is no use of formaldehyde. You are not creating any fumes inside your clinics. So the question of fumigation doesn't arise at all. It's only fogging, sir. It's only fogging. Even the wooden panel is there. So if you use fogging for not less than four to five years, you won't have anything, sir. Slowly after that, 
the polish what they have used the uh, polishes will be there for the wooden surfaces it may react slowly sir, for about 4 to 5 years of continuously use of fogging okay yeah. so that that brings us to uh, the end of almost uh, most of the questions uh, which have been asked and i have put forward if i've missed any questions and if you panelists happen to see those questions you can uh, come up and answer to those questions and uh, before i hand over uh, formally to dr ragunath for uh, formally giving your contacts a small introduction because in the beginning we missed uh, your introduction i would like to uh, conclude uh, today's uh, presentation saying that uh, covid 19 has been rampant and today a lot of people are coming ahead and telling about covid 19 making us feel and overwhelmed with all the information and uh, you know with all the um, material what they are uh, flooding us but the right material is what is required to take us to safe practice and i think today both of you together have given uh, a good academic uh, material along with uh, agglomerated with a good practical suggestion of use of available material as to which product to choose what will be the uh, usage uh, modality and how to go about your clinical practice so i thank you both